Look around you. Everything seems real. The glow of the sun, the rustling leaves, even the device you're holding right now. But what if one told you all of this might just be part of an incredibly advanced simulation? Yes, you heard it right. A computer simulation. Our entire universe as we know it could be merely the output of a superior intelligence's astronomically complex computational code. This intriguing yet baffling concept is known as the Ease Simulation Hypothesis. First suggested by the philosopher Nick Bostrom, it has since become the subject of much debate in scientific and technological circles. But what does living in a simulation mean? In essence, it suggests that everything we perceive as reality is merely a creation of a sophisticated computer program operated by a highly advanced civilization. In this simulated reality, every entity, every phenomenon, and even our consciousness are the result of complex algorithms. But how can we validate such a wild claim? After all, it's not like we can look for the developer's signature in the fabric of the cosmos. Or can we? Proponents of the theory argue that, just like programs have constraints, specifications on how they must operate within their environment, our own reality displays similar limitations. For instance, consider the speed of light. It's the maximum speed anything can travel in our universe. But why is there a limit, and why this particular speed and not any faster? Some propose that this could be a result of computational constraints, a hardware limit in the grand simulation that we exist in. And then there are other arguments, like the resolution argument, which postulates that our universe might be pixelated. Analogous to how a digital image becomes pixelated when you zoom in too much, our reality too could have a maximum level of detail beyond which it just can't compute more. Then we have the curious case of quantum indeterminacy, which wonders if the irreducible randomness of quantum mechanics is just the simulation saving on processing power by not rendering things until observed. Just as a complex game only generates detailed environments when the player is in them, could our reality be doing the same thing on a microscopic scale? All these thought-provoking debates stem from a simple idea. If we can already simulate small parts of our reality using computers, then isn't it possible that a technologically superior civilization could simulate a universe? And if that's possible, could we be inhabitants of such a simulation ourselves? Does this make you question your reality yet? In this riveting context, we encounter another fascinating proposal. The ancestor simulation argument where future advanced civilizations, our descendants, might be running simulations about their ancestors. But why would they do that? Well, suppose it's for scientific purposes. Understanding the origins, studying ancient civilizations, or gathering insights into evolutionary processes. For these civilizations, with incomprehensible computational power, creating such simulations might be no more challenging than us setting up a game of sims on our computers. Another point argued is that, if we're indeed in a simulation, the creators might not be entities, but rather an elaborate coding process that evolved over time to form what we call reality. However, critics of the simulation hypothesis point out that just because we can simulate something doesn't imply that we ourselves are a simulation. It could merely be the progress of our technological capabilities. Others question whether truly autonomous consciousness can exist within a programmed reality and stress upon the philosophical implications surrounding free will and self-awareness. Even if we were to accept that simulations with sentient beings are possible, there's still the huge challenge of computational power required to run such an expansive universe with its intricate details. Ironically, our attempts to find glitches or proof of the simulation might be constrained by the simulation itself. After all, wouldn't a highly advanced generation design a system that remains undetectable to its inhabitants? This simulation hypothesis takes our regular existential crisis and gives it an extra punch. The idea is mind-boggling, but at the same time, raises profound questions about our understanding of science, philosophy, and reality itself. While it isn't universally accepted yet, it has given birth to an entirely fresh perspective for interpreting major scientific phenomena, and indeed, our understanding of reality has always evolved with time. Once, the earth was flat and the sun revolved around it. Today, it's different. So who knows what tomorrow holds? 
Ultimately, whether we exist in physical reality or a computational one, the grandeur of our universe and its workings continue to be a testament to limitless wonders. Confronted with this idea, whether you find it absurd or intriguing, it certainly offers everyone a chance to reflect on our place in the seemingly infinite universe. So next time when you gaze upon the stars, don't forget to contemplate the cosmic question. Are we all just characters in an elaborate computer game? Or maybe the better question, if we are, does it lessen our reality's beauty or richness of our experiences? Wouldn't that still be astonishingly profound? For this conversation, let's not shy away from the philosophical implications. What is the nature of reality? What does it mean to exist? And more importantly, does it matter? Perhaps we shouldn't be constrained by traditional perceptions of reality. The simulation hypothesis introduces a paradigm shift, a new way to understand our existence. Remember that every major scientific breakthrough in history was once considered outrageous. Revolutions in knowledge often start with a seemingly ridiculous idea. So if we're in a simulation, then wouldn't life's meaning revolve around understanding its limits and its purpose? Wouldn't our goals align with understanding the mind of a programmer? Or, on a more optimistic note, perhaps this serves as an affirmation of sorts. If we are in a simulation, then surely our existence is not random or pointless. But getting back to concrete science, one can't talk about the simulation hypothesis without mentioning quantum theory. The bizarre realities of quantum mechanics align well with the idea that we exist within a simulation. After all, in the quantum world, reality is only defined when observed. This has led some to speculate that the universe computes only what's necessary for the experience of conscious observers, much like a video game would. This efficient use of processing power, only simulating observed phenomena, might explain quantum mechanics' biggest mysteries. Furthermore, the idea of quantum entanglement could be viewed as an advanced programming technique used in the simulation to quickly update data across vast distances. Even so, these ideas remain speculative, but the intersection of quantum theory and the simulation hypothesis is a fascinating area for future research. Whether you take this hypothesis as a crucial research area or an interesting thought experiment, it pushes us to explore unconventional views of reality we might have otherwise overlooked. Regardless of its validity, it's reigniting our curiosity, making us ask questions, and challenging our understanding. The simulation hypothesis may even blur the boundaries between science fiction and reality, between what's possible and what's not. At its core, this seemingly outlandish idea motivates us to reconsider the mysteries of existence from an entirely new perspective. Whether you believe in the simulation hypothesis or not, we can all agree that it opens a fascinating lens through which we can explore reality. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the exciting realms of thought and speculation.